All right here, today I am going to review and go over today's Indianapolis 500. Today's race in Indianapolis was phenomenal and spectacular for many reasons, but let's get started. Brian Price and you're watching William Blackwell on YouTube. Before the green flag flew today for the 105th running of the Indianapolis 500, there were some big storylines, if you will. One was being the front row. The front row was pretty big. You had a big age difference. You had one driver by the name of Scott Dixon, one of the greatest IndyCar drivers of all time with six championships, racing the number nine car for Chip Ganassi Racing. And to his outside, he had two youngins, and one of them being Colton Herta from Andretti. They call him Big Chungus around the paddock and on social media. But they also had Renis McKay from Ed Carpenter Racing. And uh, Renis McKay also won the Indianapolis Road Course earlier this month. And uh, he could have brought out the broom this afternoon, but I'll get to that in a minute. But he did it. Uh, but the race started. And Scott Dixon led lap one. However, on lap two, he got passed by Renus Vacay, and Vacay didn't look back and led a couple of laps. And it went back and forth with him and Colton Herta until the first pit cycle happened. And then when that happened, they kind of got separated, if you will. And we saw Connor Daly, another Ed Carpenter driver, come into the picture and take the lead at the quarter point way of this race, uh, lap 50, if you will. And when he took over, the crowd went nuts. They went crazy. And they had the rights to. Because that was an Indianapolis driver from Indiana taking over the lead in the Indianapolis 500. That's crazy and uh, just a big moment for that whole town and city. But he did not look back. Connor Taylor, Daly did not look back, more like. And he led a lot of laps. However, when that next pit cycle happened... There was a caution, and that was for Stephen Wilson driving the 25 car. He was on pit road and had a little incident, and his uh, right front got separated from the body, and uh, it forced him to DNF, and he finished last place in 33rd position. But when they restarted, we saw some more comers and some goers. One of the comers was Graham Rahal and Takuma Sato, and we also saw Alex Palou and Helio Castroneves. But... They kept on going, and then at the end, around lap 150, we saw a wreck. The second caution of the day, and this was really interesting here. Today, we only saw two cautions. That's a all-time low for the Indianapolis 500, one being for Stephen Wilson, and the second one being for Graham Rahal. Graham Rahal, you got to hate it for him. He went to pit road. He still has a chance to win this race. You get the point? He comes out, has a tire loose. And when that tire came loose, his car went into the outside retaining wall really, really, really hard. And uh, it caused him that his chances of winning the 500 were over with. He, his race ended. But when that tire came off, it came hit the wall, obviously, but it came back down and hit Connor Daly's nose. Connor Daly, when it hit his nose, it did not break it by any means, but it did leave. A little special mark there, right? like it would hurt him aerodynamically. It was causing more drag to slow him down. And it pretty much ended his chances of winning, unless they can somehow fix that, which I highly doubted. Uh, but they continued on. But Graham Rahal, though, you got to hate it for him. He had a good chance of winning this race. And then he, he, was, he was knocked out of this race by something he could not control or handle. And I really hate it for him. Because he was my race pick today, and... Uh, just so close. He'll get an Indianapolis 500 win sometime before it's all said and done. Mark my word. But the race resumed, and when it resumed, we saw a three-way battle. And it was for a long time, it felt like. It was, you had, obviously, Helio Castroneves, Alex Polo, and Pat O'Ward. Pat O'Ward, though, was pretty much in third for the whole last run of this race. But, like, they didn't obviously run third, one, two, three, four, because he had a lot of cars staying out, like Felix Rosenquist and Takuma Sato, J.R. Hildebrand. You get the point at the end of this race. But they were battling it out in the mid teens positions while everyone else stayed out. And that's when we saw Helio Castroneves and Alex Pelot going back and forth every single lap, like literally switching one, like their positions every single lap. It was crazy, it was intense. But, when they were coming to the white flag, we saw something crazy. 
they approach lap traffic and lap traffic is crazy and you don't know what they're going to do but they did hold their own line and uh did not they didn't really change the outcome of this race helio castro nevis had a good size lead on alex palou but if he messed up palou was right there to take over but he did hold his line and helio castro nevis went on to win his fourth career indianapolis 500 that was a big deal for him uh, because the last couple of years, he's been racing for Roger Penske in this race as a one-off. And this year, he went to Meyer Shank. And who knows what would happen next year? Does he go full-time? I don't know. Time will tell. But uh, you had Alex Palou finishing runner-up. That's going to be a tough pill to swallow for him. He's going to win at Indianapolis 500 before it's all said and done. He's got to hold his head up high. And Pat Ward finished third. But... A really eventful race today at the Indianapolis 500, but we did see an all-time low with two cautions. But everybody, though, remember to please like and subscribe and comment down below your opinions of today's race. I'm curious to know.